They preach another gospel. How can we not see that? You get to heaven by works, by Mary, by penance, by baptism, by confession, by rosary. No. This is another gospel. This is not the true gospel. A couple of weeks ago, uh, two messages, we talked about the nature of saving faith. And we reminded you, salvation is by faith alone, not in Catholicism. It's by a combination of grace and faith and works. But we know what the New Testament teaches. No one, Romans 3.20 says, will be declared righteous in God's sight by observing the law. Romans 3.26, God justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Faith alone, Christ alone. Romans 3.28, we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Romans 4, Abraham was justified not by works. If he was justified by works, he had something to boast about. But what does Scripture say? He believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the man who doesn't work but trusts God who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. Romans 4, it was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise, verses 13 and 14. It was through faith. Romans 9, verses 30 and 32, the Gentiles who didn't pursue righteousness have obtained it, a righteousness that is by faith. Romans 10, 4, Christ is the end of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Romans 11, 5 and 6, there's a remnant chosen by grace, and if by grace it is no longer by works, if it were, grace would no longer be grace. Galatians 2.16, a man is not justified by observing the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So too we have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith, not by observing the law, because by observing the law no one will be justified. Galatians 3.10, and all who rely on observing the law are under a curse, because cursed is everyone who doesn't continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Righteous will live by faith. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, the gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. Paul in Philippians 3 gives his testimony. He says that not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but a righteousness which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God and is by faith. Titus 3, God saved us not because of righteous things which we have done, but because of his mercy, having been justified by his grace. We have become heirs the hope of eternal life. You know all those verses. Salvation is by faith alone in Christ alone, through God's grace alone. When you put your trust in Jesus Christ, God declares you righteous, not because you are, but because He imputes the righteousness of Christ to you, because He imputes your sin to Him. Christ bears your sin, you receive His righteousness. This is the glory of the great doctrine of justification. Roman Catholicism does not believe that. Council of Trent, 1545 to 1563, came out with statements. Listen to some of them. To those who work well unto the end and trust in God, eternal life is to be offered. That doesn't sound like anything I just read. To those who work well unto the end and trust in God, eternal life is to be offered. Listen to this. It is given as a reward promised by God himself to be faithfully given to their good works and merits by those very works which have been done in God fully satisfied the divine law according to the state of this life and to have truly merited eternal life. Eternal life in the Catholic system is something you earn by your works. You merit it and you receive it because of your merit. That is an absolute and total contradiction. That is another gospel. There are hundreds of canons that came out of the Council of Trent. I'll just share a few. I did uh, a few of these uh, two weeks ago. But some of the canons, just listen to this is what Trent, this is Catholic dogma. If anyone says that the sinner is justified by faith alone, meaning that nothing else is required to cooperate 
in order to obtain the grace of justification, and that it is not in any way necessary that he be prepared and disposed by the action of his own will, let him be anathema. And they pronounced damnation on anybody who said salvation was by faith alone. These were directed directly at the Reformers. Another one, if anyone says that justifying faith is nothing else than confidence in divine mercy which remits sins for Christ's sake, or that it is this confidence alone that justifies us, let him be anathema. And they keep saying it again and again. Another one, if anyone says that the righteousness received is not preserved and also not increased before God through good works, but that those works are merely the fruits and signs of justification obtained and not the cause of its increase, let him be anathema. In other words, the, the Reformers understood the Bible as well, as all true believers had, that works are the result of justification, not the cause. But if you say that, you're cursed by Roman Catholicism. Council of Trent. Here's a final one. If anyone says that the good works of the one justified are in such manner the gifts of God that they are not also the good merits of him justified, or that the one justified by the good works that he performs by the grace of God and the merit of Jesus Christ, whose living member he is, does not truly merit an increase of grace, eternal life, and in case he dies in grace, the attainment of eternal life itself and also increase in glory, let him be anathema. The idea is you keep doing more works, more works, more works, you increase grace, you in God increases grace, you increase works, and together you achieve a higher and higher rate of sanctification, which they call justification, until finally you have attained eternal life. That's what it says, the attainment of eternal life. If you don't believe that you attain your eternal life by your works, you're cursed. Did Pope John Paul II believe that? Of course he believed that. Why? because the church is infallible. Catholic theology can't be amended because it's infallible. And he is the faithful guardian of that system. We should grieve for that man because he gained the whole world and lost his soul. The most loved and admired man by Catholics in the world, blinded by the prince of this world, never saw the light of the true gospel. I grieve for the many who are deceived by this Pope and his religion. It breaks my heart to see so many people in that system who can't discern truth from error, or genuine Christianity from its counterfeit. And my heart really breaks to hear from Protestant evangelicals that this man was a true Christian, leading others to true Christianity. The religious corruption of Rome has been on constant display for the whole world to see. Admittedly, the splendor and pageantry are extraordinary. People standing in long lines for hours to, to virtually worship a dead man with a rosary in his hand and a twisted crucifix by his side. And one man said on the television, one Catholic uh, bishop, we prayed for him and now we're going to pray to him. Meaningless repetition of prayers which are an abomination to God. Twenty-six years in that position, never knew the truth. And the princes underneath him in all their purple and scarlet robes are disguised as angels of light along with him. The magnificence and grandeur of this corrupt religion that has become so rich at the expense of people, at the impoverishing of people, has bewitched a gullible world. They preach another gospel. How can we not see that?